Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Cutting Corners Vinyl in Nederland, Texas, and honestly today I'm really not sure what the video is going to be about. I'm going to kind of go with the flow. I was going to do a tutorial over split text, which we'll do that on Wednesday, but I did not sleep at all last night, like zero. Um, as you can see, I've already had 16 hours of stay in today, and that's since midnight because your Apple Watch starts over every single day, and that should tell you how busy I've been, and it is 3.35 p.m., but my brain is kind of in a fog, uh, so going through the steps smoothly to teach y'all, kind of difficult. And there are a couple of questions I have because I've had so many people requesting SVG tutorials, and then I do them and not everybody watches them. Um, are you not interested in Corel Draw? Um, part of the reason why I recommend Corel over other art programs is one, it is much easier to learn than Inkscape. I'm just not a fan of Inkscape. And Corel for the home and family version is only, you know, between 69 and a hundred dollars. It's really not anything expensive. And that's part of the reason why I don't recommend Adobe. And it's not because Adobe is a bad program, but if you're wanting to use it at home and you're not doing this as a business, just for Illustrator alone, it is like 20 bucks a month and you cannot buy the program outright anymore. And if you want, so, and if you want the whole creative cloud, it's like 50 bucks a month. That's a lot of money. You can pay for Corel within a few months of having Adobe. And Corel, I find, is pretty easy. And whenever you're working with SVGs, which are vector images, I just feel like, you know, for your money, you're getting a great deal with Corel. Some people may see it differently, but you also have to look at it as how much money do you want to invest in it. Um, and you can look these things up for yourself too. Uh, again, I don't really like Inkscape. It is not the easiest program to use and there's not a lot of resources other than YouTube tutorials over Inkscape. Um, with Adobe and Corel, there are books, there's lots of other ways to learn it besides just through, you know, watching me. Um, but I also want to know what kind of SVGs you're wanting to learn. You know, we worked on 3D text, we worked on basic text, multiple outlines, we're going to do some split letters. Um, and I can show you the basics, but unless you have an artistic eye, are, are willing to learn to have an artistic eye. I can't teach you everything. Part of it is taste. And I don't say that to be rude. It's just, you know, I'll get people, how do you do this? How do you do that? Well, if you know the basics, then that's the stepping stone. You know what I'm saying? You can use that to get further into the program. But you got to start off with baby steps. You know, if you're unfamiliar with an art program, you know, learning the simple stuff first and learning that well will help you in the long run. You want to build on it. Um, it's kind of like color theory, you know, unless you have an eye for color, which not everybody does and that's okay. Not everybody's artistic and that's okay coming up with color schemes and things like that that are your own can be difficult. Um, you know, I feel like I'm better with color than other things, but you know, that's my own personal opinion. Um, color theory is probably one of my favorites. I love playing with color. I mean, if you haven't noticed, I, you know, colors my kind of is my thing, but I just want to make sure that I give y'all the most informed and accurate information I possibly can. You know, and you can take it with a grain of salt however you want to. Yeah, I cut the neck on this shirt because when I put it on this morning, it was like it was sewn 
with two backs even though this didn't have a tag on it so it really felt weird so I just cut a little v-neck in it so it didn't feel so tight on my neck but isn't this cute I showed y'all how to do this 3d lettering and it's so easy once you get used to it and then once you learn things like that you n can understand how to put you know mixing a 3d letter with a basic letter or mixing images things like that it's a part of it is practice 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 but I didn't want to get all preachy on here it's just I've had a lot of people you know why don't you do it this way why don't you teach me this way why don't you do it this way because especially if you're wanting to do this as a business the art programs the programs that come with your machines just aren't going to cut it to make the really good designs i mean you can do a lot with it but you can't do everything with it especially if you're wanting to do more than just cut vinyl like if you're wanting to do sublimation or wanting to get into any type of printing at all you're going to want to have some type of art program um or at least that's in my opinion you know i've been doing this a very long time and a lot of times people don't want simple they don't want one color of text and be like oh yay that's great no they want fancy because they're used to seeing fancy you go on Pinterest and you see all these ideas and you're like it can be overwhelming but you can do it um, I know I'm kind of rambling and going back and forth on things as I said I did not sleep at all but there were some things that I wanted to talk about because you know I've been asked about it well why don't you do it this way well here's the thing about it <clears throat> right now if you have a Cricut you may love it or a silhouette or a brother scan and cut but in a year what if there's some new and amazing machine that you want and you have to relearn a program well the good thing about an art program is I can export as an SVG or a DXP so I can export it and bring it into any machine and then I don't have to do any real editing to it so if the machine cuts beautifully I don't have to learn a new program does that make sense it makes it a whole lot easier or if you get a new printer typically it's a RIP program that sends things to the printer and sends it correctly. So as long as you have an art program and you know it well, then you can use it with anything, any brand machine. And that's part of what I want y'all to realize is when it comes to this kind of thing, I'm not brand loyal. I use the Cricut because it's the easiest thing to bring my SVGs into. It takes and separates out my colors. Don't really have to worry about it. But I also know that if I want to cut a 48 inch by 72 inch banner, none of these machines, these home based machines are going to cut it. You need something that's more industrial. Well, if I can design it in Corel Draw, I can make it where it'll work for any program any program any machine which I think is extremely important for y'all to realize um, and I don't think people talk about it enough and I do have Corel link down in the description box I don't make any money off it I'm not sponsored by Corel I just know that Corel is a great program for the price there are certain things that are better about Adobe versus Corel but there are things that are better about Corel than Adobe and a lot of it is personal preference if you learn started with Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator that's typically going to be what you prefer but I'm sorry and maybe it's just me being cheap but I think that if you have to pay 20 bucks a month every single month for a program you can't buy it outright that's kind of silly or at least i think so i don't mind 
cloud-based versions of programs. But if you're doing, especially if you're doing this as a hobby and you're not making any money off of it, spending 20 bucks every month on that is a lot. You can buy a lot of vinyl with 20 bucks. Or at least that's what I like to think about, you know. Um, but again, this isn't sponsored. These are my own opinions and my own thoughts. And you can do with it what you will. Um, I just want people to understand why I'm doing the things that I'm doing and the reasoning behind the new types of tutorials that we're doing. Um, so I guess that's it on that subject. Don't forget our Thermoflex Plus is on sale this week for our weekly wow. So the sale ends on May the 3rd. So they're all $2.96 a sheet for a 12 by 15 inch sheet. They're normally $4 each. So that's a pretty good deal. Don't forget Friday is the first. So that is when we do our Patreon scrap box drawing. And then Monday is May the 4th. That's when we do our regular scrap box drawing. And if you want to enter in for that, all that you have to do is go and comment on the April the 4th video. And if you're a Patreon supporter, then you're automatically entered in for the Patreon drawing. I guess that's it. Don't forget to check me out on all my social media, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram. Sorry if I rambled too much, but I guess that's it. Bye.